Good morning, my name is Tom, and today's video is about the Key Bridge Collapse. I had avoided talking about this sooner because I saw the initial um, Harbor Masters reports and the videos and said, uh, well, yeah, that's a really terrible tragedy. And I didn't think much of it, but there's a lot of people out there who are promoting ideas involving things that go boom and people promoting ideas of cyber attacks i don't see how that could possibly cause this but people believe it and what i can do as a professional is give you a rundown at least of the initial reporting from the harbor master and uh the videos that i saw the initial videos that were put out and um go from there because uh, a lot of like regular coverage, uh, pundits, analysts, and so forth, they're not, they're not main propulsion people. They're not search and rescue people. They're, uh, they're not even gifted amateurs. They, they, don't have, they don't have the credentials to have an opinion on the subject. So uh, here's where we start with the Harbor Master's report. The Harbor Master and uh, initial reports are spotty at best, especially when they come in the midst of the tragedy. So this may not be a hundred percent accurate. They're trying to provide as much information as they can to officials. And sometimes things get mixed up in communication and I've been there before. Um, the Harbor Master said, uh, in writing that the dolly uh, went out the tugs departed the ship and not long after the dolly called the harbor master back to say it had lost both steering and propulsion so the tugs you know requested assistance from the tugs again the tugs came back out uh, the ship regained steering and propulsion the tugs departed the ship continued on its way and then it lost steering again, and it issued a mayday call. What is mayday? Mayday, for non-maritime people, means people are going to die if we do not get immediate assistance. That is the highest priority call. All traffic that isn't mayday related has to stop because people's lives are in jeopardy. So they issued that mayday call. And they were, the ship started uh, veering to starboard. They created about a, a 90 second window as they took their initial actions to evacuate the bridge they were heading towards. Which isn't much, but it's better than nothing. The uh, ship was veering to starboard, which implies to me it had a single screw counter-rotating not counter-rotating, standard rotation screw uh, turning at the time. So if you have two screws pushing your ship, the port screw is counter-rotating. It spins counterclockwise. The starboard screw will spin clockwise. And that keeps the ship moving straight. If you only have one screw, you need steering to move straight. If you don't have steering, you're in trouble. Then... They, the news reported it as black smoke coming from the ship. That was not smoke. That was soot and exhaust. What I saw, and this is from my diesel propulsion ship days, was the, uh, the ship's throttles were slammed into full reverse. And as, something, as somebody who worked in main propulsion... We absolutely hated when the bridge did that. You only do that in, you know, immediate danger because you're going to start trashing things in the engine room. You're going to have a lot of maintenance and repairs and blown gaskets to deal with. But in an emergency, you slam it into full reverse. It puts a lot of strain on the engine. You start belting, bel uh, belching out a lot of black exhaust. In this case, you have probably more than 200,000 uh, 200, uh, tons 
you know, just cruising along at eight knots and suddenly its engines are trying to pull it backwards. You're not going to stop the ship that way, but you slow it down. However, as that screw is cavitating in the water, and I say cavitating because it's not really gripping and pulling on the water to move the ship backwards yet. It's got too much going against it to get a good bite into the water. It's cavitating and creating drag, but it also kind of increases sometimes your drift to starboard. So the ship's captain also deployed the port anchor while moving. This creates a lot of drag. Also puts the crew's life in danger if uh, you have to have crew standing nearby when the anchor drops. But they were trying to not they were trying to mitigate as much damage as they could, and so I, they had to. Then they tried to decrease their drift to starboard because they saw what they were heading towards, um, while at the same time slowing the ship down. So they dropped the port anchor, creates drag. The anchor doesn't bite. It, it's just going to drag. You can't really set an anchor like that. Uh, but it slows the ship down some more, along with the cavitating screw and it creates a slightly longer window before the ship hits the bridge. Now bridges, believe it or not, are movable objects. They uh, expand, they're built to expand and contract with the weather because uh, you know all the pavement and stuff will crack, welds will break, and so forth if it can't expand and contract with temperature changes. On top of that, some of them will have a bit of sway, you know, in heavy winds and so forth, um, and they're designed for that to also prevent things like welds from breaking, hardware from loosening, you know, pavement from cracking. You know, basically, it's designed to move so that it won't uh, split apart. Cargo carriers, on the other hand, once they're up at speed, even at a low speed, they're an unstoppable force. It takes, you know, sometimes miles, multi plural miles, to go from, you know, 10 knots down to zero knots to all stop. There clearly wasn't enough time for that. Um, not that I'm saying they were moving at 10 knots, but they were, they were, moving at a good clip. Uh, I can't remember what the report said, but I think it was above five nautical miles per hour. Uh, so basically, the ship's captain and crew did everything they can, including potentially putting their own lives in danger to prevent the bridge from being hit. Uh, it was never going to not happen at the point where they lost steering but they did what they could to mitigate the damage and save lives. Now, are they blameless in this accident? I have no idea. This could have just been a freak accident. It could potentially have been an act of negligence combined causing the accident. I don't know. That's what the investigation is for. As for the people saying this involved things that go boom, and uh, people who insist that this was a cyber attack or whatever. These are people who are usually selling you things. I mean, at least if they're big names. You know, they tend to be selling things like uh, penis pills, uh, energy drinks, you know, natural male enhancement and all of that crap. They're, they're basically doom fantasy prophets. Don't listen to them. The Doom Fantasy Prophets are taking advantage of you. They are manipulators. That's all I've got to say on the subject. I will not revisit this boat accident, the ship accident again.